Hey guys, welcome to Channel Everything, and today I'm going to show you how to set up the Print and Write 3D. And I'm just going to quickly go over all the parts that you're going to need. So, first of all, you obviously need a 3D printer like this one here. And then you're also going to want to upgrade the power supply because it isn't enough to handle the heat bed. So, this one's a 750 watt. You don't need that much. I'll leave a link in the description too once you can use and to go over powering it all up, the connections, and how to turn on a computer supply because it's a little bit different than normal power supplies. So this is going to be a multi-part video, so please subscribe so you can stay up to date on the new videos. So next what you're going to want to get is a heated bed and a piece of glass or aluminum, whatever you want to print on. Got both of those on Amazon. I'll leave a link to them in the description below. And you're also going to want to get a heavier gauge wire so it doesn't melt and some small binder clips for connecting the bed because I don't really like using silicone or thermal paste because it just gets a mess. And then I just put some tape on top there. Just regular printer tape will do. Or capped on tape, whatever you prefer. And for mounting the heated bed onto the printer, there are these 3D printed um, mounts that I got on Thingiverse. I'll leave a link to those in the description below. The hardware allows you to level the print bed on each corner individually so that way you don't have to level the extruder which is what, how you had to do it before and it's just not as level. And you're also going to want to get a spacer to compensate for the extra height of the heated bed so that way you're extruder doesn't crash into the board and break it. So let me just get this off here. Hold on. And I recommend getting all the hardware, like the screws, bolts, and springs from a hardware store because you'll probably have to buy a hundred of them unless you mess up a lot. But um, whatever. So that's a JST connector which is what's going to connect the thermistor and these ones here are tab, connect tab connectors which you're going to need to plug heated bed into the board. So like I just said, I recommend just getting the tab connectors and the screws from a hardware store because it just makes it so much easier so that way you know it fits and if you buy it online like I said you're gonna probably have to buy a lot of them and you just want it to fit correctly so you can always bring this um, like the mounting hardware into the store and check to make sure it all fits together like how you want it and the screw that I'm using I think is an inch and a quarter and the spring I think is about half an inch all this stuff will be in the description below and you can check the bolt to make sure it fits into the knob as well and it just makes it so much easier so now that I went over all the parts we are ready to get started so just go buy everything you need first. So what you're first going to start off by doing is removing the tape from the bed because we're going to end up cutting off the corners uh, to fit the brackets into for holding up the bed. And this is just really easy and we shouldn't have to take off the heated bed or the bed that's currently on there unless you want to. But in this video I didn't take it off and I had no trouble cutting the corners up. So before you cut the bed, I'm just going to quickly show you how everything all fits together. So here I have all the hardware you need. So you need a spring, two washers, uh, the bolt that fits into the knob, and a screw. So I used a, a one and a quarter inch screw for this. I'm going to show you how it attaches to the bed itself. So here's the bed. I'm going to put the screw in, and then a washer is going to go in underneath to help make better contact with the bed and between the spring and the bed and then after hold on here so then after then we're going to add the spring in and then we're going to put in another washer on top of that and then the corner is going to go in and then the knob 
is going to go in as well. And that's, bas that's basically how it all assembles together. I just wanted to show you this so that way you know how the cut looks like and how it all fits together so that way you don't mess up your own uh, platform. And it you don't have to have the cut perfect, it just has to be enough so that way it uh, fits square onto the sides. And I didn't have any problems with that. You can almost eyeball it if you wanted to. And that's it. So you'll just be able to loosen and tighten the uh, spring to lower and raise the bed. So for the next part here, I'm going to show you how to cut the corners so that way you can fit the new mounts. Because as you can see, if you already have them printed out, you can see that they're a little flat on one side. And you're going to want to adjust the corners so that way they can fit correctly. And these mounts, they are adjusted when they were made. So that way it aligns correctly with the heated bed for or for the heated bed that I'm using and for most other heated beds of the same size. So that way it fits correctly. Because if you just drill into the uh the uh the standard build platform itself or the stock build platform, it just won't fit correctly. So I'm measuring here and it's about a centimeter and a half and that's what I'm gonna mark from side or from one side to the other. And it doesn't it does definitely does not have to be perfect. And you can almost eyeball it. As long as the bracket fits square on the edges, then you should be good. And then it's about a half a centimeter in. So I'm just gonna darken the line to make it a little bit easier for me to see where I have to cut. And you always want to check twice and cut once. So definitely double check your measurements before you go ahead and cut it because once you cut it really there is no going back and yes this does void the warranty on the printer so if you did plan on returning it um, yeah you might have to do some explaining or try to cover it up or something because I doubt you get your money back so I'm just going to be using a Dremel to make the cut and just take your time, it's not a rush. And the plastic is really, really easy to cut. It shouldn't be any problem. You can just use like some cutting wheel. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be taking off almost like a little bit at a time. So I'm going to be cutting off like a good chunk of it. And then if I need to cut a little bit more off and then just go slowly instead of making one initial cut because that could lead to other problems if it doesn't fit correctly. So I'm just doing another fit. It looks like I'm going to need to take a little bit more off. So I'm just going to quickly do that. Like I said, just take your time. It's not a rush. Just get it right the first time. So that way you won't have any problems with it later. A little bit more. want to make sure that it sits correctly. See again. Looks like it fits pretty good. Take a little bit more off the right. All right, that's that's pretty good. Let's see this side. Yeah, sometimes when you cut it, like, 
leaves a little extra like uh, pieces on the end that you need to cut away but now I'm just testing the fit one more time looks pretty good so now there's a few ways that you can mount it either by um, gluing it on which is what I'm probably going to do or you can actually mark a hole where it is on the uh, bracket if you want to screw it in but I'm just um, probably just going to glue it in because I found that there's problems um, using a screw because it just doesn't fit correctly with the knob so I'm also going to show you how to um, mount it using a screw or cut the hole for it really this is just like you could almost eyeball it once you kind of have a good mark just make sure it fits don't want to mess it up And now I'm just going to screw it in, or drill it out. Okay. Looks like the hole goes through all the way. And that's it. So, I'm, like I said before, I'm just going to glue it in instead of using a screw. But I just did it this way to show you how to do that and now basically all that's left is to do the same thing for the rest of the four corners and I will see you guys in a second So now that's all left to do, or for at least this part of the video, is to solder wires to the heated bed so you can get electricity to it so that way it works. So for pin 1, you want to line up uh, the positive end, because in my case I'm using 12 volts, if you're using 24 then just read what it says on the side there. And then for the negative, I'm going to be using two and three so I'm just going to split the wire in half let's just get this soldered up and I'm just going to put down a nice bead of solder onto it so there's also another way if you have a thinner gauge wire you can actually go up through the holes on it and then solder it in there I'm not going to do it this way because I want to go a little bit heavier gauge so that way it allows, um, it will, that way I won't have the risk of the wires melting or something like that. But it should be fine if you use a little bit smaller so that I didn't want to take the risk. So let's just finish this up. Jeez. Yeah, it kind of helps if you have something else to hold in place. So I kind of was moving it around when it was cooling down a little bit. You want to make sure it's secure and I'm just probably going to add a little bit more here. Ok, 
Okay. And now I'll do the same thing for the negative side. So now that that's done, I'm going to install the thermistor for the last part of the video here and basically the thermistor is just going to take the reading of the temperature and I'm going to install it on the back side of the heated bed so you want to flip the bed around and then uh, apply some Kapton tape to attach it to the back side. I mean some people say that you probably shouldn't do it to the back side even though the temperature is going to be still the same temperature um, as the heated beds putting out it might not be as accurate because the glass won't be the same temperature as the bed but what you could do is set the heated bed a little bit higher than you want it to allow for that and then further on in your print you can just lo uh, lower the temperature and that will fix that problem so that is it and I'm just going to do a quick test fit here of the glass to make sure the connections aren't in the way and everything looks pretty good okay so now we're ready to move on but I'll save that for the next video and in that video I'll be covering things like hooking up the power supply because we need to upgrade that and that's going to be the main focus and hooking up the final connections and part three We'll be setting everything else up. Please subscribe for next coming videos. Thank you.